Good morning and welcome on this Palm Passion Sunday. We welcome any guests or visitors who are, who are with us. I know two of them, my brother Shem and sister-in-law Alice are here. Uh, they came for the uh, organ week, right? Uh, Brian, I don't know if you, no, I won't ask if you went. Uh, but uh, we uh, are thankful that everybody, I hope, was preserved during the, the storm. We welcome our Facebook and uh, YouTube members who are watching online, and we invite you to participate in the Lord's Supper when uh, we gather. Now you can prepare your bread and fruit of the vine, uh, but all are welcome, and we thank you for being here. We're beginning uh, the Holy Week, as you know. Uh, today is Palm Passion Sunday, as, as I shared with you, and during the the, the opening hymn, if uh, the, the assisting minister and I will lead the children in with the Hosanna banner, and then you can follow the choir and receive uh, your palms. Uh, after, uh, I, I will bless them first before the, uh, the, the opening hymn. Then on Thursday, we will have our uh, sort of Holy Thursday dinner. That's a new thing this year at 6.30, and we just practiced the reading. Uh, Dale is Jesus, and he did a very good job. Um, so uh, I'm teasing you, Dale. Uh, he's looking very stern at me. Uh, <laughs> but we worked out all the kinks, we hope. Um, so please, please come, and it's a catered meal. And then we will come in here for the, uh, for the rest of the service. Good Friday at 7.00 will be Stations of the Cross, and then we'll have an Easter Eve service at uh, 7 p.m. that'll start in the courtyard with a new fire, and it's become a lovely tradition. And then on Easter Sunday, two services at 8, with a breakfast in between, a brunch in between, and at 10.30, and that's a covered, covered dish. I think I covered everything except the egg hunt, which is on Saturday at 10 a.m. So if you have children and grandchildren, uh, we had lots of, lots of folks last year, uh, and we're looking forward to another one again. There is a sign-up sheet for the, uh, the cover dish uh, brunch for Easter and, and also for the Thursday evening catered meal. There is a Pearl Buck fundraiser uh, coming up. Uh, Pat and Mary have the tickets for that. And the spring cleanup has already been announced at April 27th. And we need flower donations for the flower planting, which will be on May 3rd. In terms of uh, joys and concerns, we've learned that Ernie Bauck has not been feeling well. Let us keep him in our prayers. And Jane and Don Battle announced today that they are grandparents. Riley Brandon Battle was born this morning at 7:11. So uh, let's. Uh, I don't have the weight or the, the height, Jane didn't share that, uh, but please rejoice with them. Please rise for the blessing of the palms. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The Lord be with you. We praise and thank you, O God, for the great acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. On this day, he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was acclaimed Son of David and King of Kings by those who scattered their garments and branches of palm in his path. We ask that you bless these branches and those who bear them and grant that we may ever hail him as our Lord and King and follow him with perfect confidence through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. <laughs> Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. <coughs> the first reading is from Isaiah 50, verses 4 through 9. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen to those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pull, pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm will be read responsorially. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction, and my bones are consumed. I am the scorn of all my enemies a disgrace to my neighbors, a dismay to my acquaintances. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. Like the dead, I am forgotten, out of mind. I am as useless as a broken pot. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Gospel according to Mark, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this. The Lord needs it, and, it, and we'll send it back here immediately. They went away, found a colt, tied near a door, outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! 
Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The Gospel of the Lord. You You may be seated. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our Maker and Redeemer. Amen. Today is a day of contrast, as you will discover, for we will end the service with a reading from the Passion. And we began with the Palm Sunday procession, and it seems to me that the day and the week helps us to see that people have not really changed that much, for it is a day of contrast. Jesus enters the city of Jerusalem, greeted as a king, with hosannas and blessings, but humbly on a colt. At the end of today's service, we'll hear that he's dressed by the soldiers royally in purple, but not to praise him, but only to strip him and humiliate him. As he enters Jerusalem on a cult, people take off their cloaks and spread them before him and scatter leafy branches to honor him. My brother Shem is here, and he might remember that our older sister Ruth would tell us to do that. We didn't, of course, when there was a puddle. Uh, uh, She would say the Queen of England would have somebody put a coat down for them so that that she wouldn't have to get her feet wet. Now there's a king anyway, right, Shem? So uh, we don't have to worry. At the end of the service, we'll hear that they will indeed strip him of the purple garments that they put on him to mock him. And they don't put leafy branches at his feet, but a crown of thorns on his head. As he enters the city, those who went ahead And those who followed will shout, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. And so at the time, there was a Jewish nationalistic dream that he disappointed them about. For some scholars feel that Judas even betrayed him because he thought he would lead lead Israel uh, to rebellion against the Roman Empire. As they crucify him, They, the leaders, mock and taunt him. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. After he enters Jerusalem in humble triumph, he goes to the temple, as we already heard at the end of the uh, at the end of the gospel lesson today, the Palm Sunday lesson for the very next uh, passage in Mark. Uh, is that with prophetic authority, he drives the money changers out of the temple. But the Palm Sunday text has him looking around in the temple before he leaves for the Mount of Olives with the disciples. Scholars argue that, and Mark indicates that, that this cleansing of the temple was the act that made the leaders decide that Jesus had to be eliminated. Mark writes, the chief priests and scribes kept looking for a way to kill him. For the crowds were spellbound, Mark writes, by his teaching. Later we will hear these same leaders deride him on the cross. You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. The gospel accounts are clear. It is not the people, but the leaders and the Roman authorities who are eager to eliminate Jesus, this prophet who does not do and say what they would like him to say and do. In fact, the fickle people are swayed by the good news and healings of Jesus, and at the same time, with total amnesia, they follow the designs of the authorities who have their own interests at heart. We know that even the disciples abandoned him when things did not go their way. But we will hear 
at the end of this service that some faithful women accompanied him at the cross, and we hear from the Gospel of John that John was there as well, but the women from a distance, Mark will say. Among them were Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James the younger, and of Joses and Salome. These used to follow him, Mark writes, and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women, he writes, who had come up from Jerusalem. So there are the faithful who are around even at a distance. There's a connection then between the crowd singing Hosanna and blessed to Jesus as he came into Jerusalem and now that he's outside the city, so here's another contrast, he comes into the city and he's crucified outside the city in Golgotha on a cross and the women stand faithfully there. And then the highlight of Mark's passion story, which you will hear. It is what he's driving towards in his account, and it's stunning that it's a centurion, a Roman officer, who proclaims this, this man was truly God's son. And so you too stand with him in the face of so much noise in our country, so many leaders who pump themselves up as lesser gods to spellbound the crowds and would lead them astray with their false promises and from the one who proclaims himself as Lord and whom we proclaim as Lord this day and who at the same time fulfills the promise of David and yet, as Paul writes, emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, and humbled himself to become obedient the, to the point of death, even death on a cross. It was in a thoroughly human and explosive context that your Savior and my Savior, in fact, the Savior of the world, stood and witnessed so that we too, with all that assails us, can say truly, this was the Son of God. For he lived as one of us and knew our joy and our pain and our sorrow and our death. By his death on the cross, we have seen that God's love has no limits, even to that of a Roman centurion. This is why we proclaim today that he has come riding in majesty. And we will sing, ride on, ride on in majesty, in lowly pomp, ride on to die. Bow your meek head to mortal pain, then take, O Christ, your power and reign. Amen.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's promise to reconcile all things, let us pray for the church, the well-being of creation, and a world in need. Blessed one, today the church sings glad hosannas as we enter Holy Week. Prepare us to bear witness to Christ's suffering and death endured for our sake. Gather your people around the cross and comfort us with the resurrection hope. Hear us, O God. Renew your good creation and protect the balance of life on earth. Encourage the work of foresters, scientists, arborists, gardeners, and river keepers. We pray for the health of pollinating insects, songbirds, and native plants. Hear us, O God. Establish peace and justice among the nations, especially in Ukraine, Israel, Gaza, Sudan, and Haiti. Hold to account any of the authority to judge others. Grant the courts, legislatures, and local governments will serve with integrity and compassion. Hear us, O God. Bring hope to any who feel forsaken or forgotten. Make a way for refugees and, and asylum seekers. Reunite families enduring separation. We pray for any who are incarcerated, institutionalized, or in foster care, that they may know your love. Hear us, O God. Give energy and joy to our pastors, deacons, worship leaders, and musicians. Bless the newly baptized among us, their sponsors, confirmands, and teachers. Watch over those who travel. Hear us, O God. Heal and sustain those among us who are ill or in need of your healing presence. We pray especially for Akiko, Hiro, Jennifer, Maggie, Sandy, John, Sue, Tracy, Suzanne, Paul, Clark, Hannah, Bill, Casey, Elizabeth, Charlene, Michael, Harry, Anita, Dottie, Jack, Bob, and Kevin, and those we mention on our lips and in our hearts. Hear us, O God. Blessed one, our times are in your hands. Sustain us in discipleship throughout our lives and receive us into everlasting life. Hear us, O God. Accompany us on our journey, God of grace, and receive the prayers of our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. be with you always. Please greet one another with the peace, and if you don't know the name of the person beside you, introduce yourself. I'm just going to warn you, next year, the, next week, the outreach committee is going to invite you to wear name tags. In a brief uh, mission moment, those of you who were here Wednesday night heard this already, but uh, Fish, uh, Penridge Fish, gave a report to the ministerium. That's the ecumenical group of uh, congregations, pastors and congregations, there are 25 members, uh, gave a report that they feed 250 families a month, and that's uh, 600 to 700 individuals. So when you put your food out in the carriage or donate to, to fish, uh, you're supporting an incredible cause. That's 35,000 pounds of food per month uh, that uh, the congregations and all those who support fish uh, donate. 
Right now they have 60 volunteers, but that was a pandemic number. They now need more volunteers again because they've gone back to their regular schedule. So if you have time to volunteer at FISH, you're invited to do so. The other thing that uh, they shared with us is because of all their donors' uh, generosity and the congregation's uh, generosity, they are doing really well financially. So that doesn't mean you can stop giving. It just means for once we can hear that a nonprofit is doing really well. Uh, and they, they just wanted to th ask us to thank all the congregations for your, your generous support. Let us receive the offer.
Jesus, you are the bread of life and the host of this meal. Bless these gifts that we have gathered that all people may know your goodness. Feed us not only with this holy food, but with hunger for justice and peace. We pray this in your name. Amen. As we prepare for communion, those of you who are at home, you can make your final preparations to bring out your bread and the fruit of the vine and either commune with the communion assistants with me or with the congregation saying the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you and know that Christ is present in your home as Christ is here as well. Here we will, after the choir communes, we will assemble in two lines and you may receive either wine in a pouring, uh, from the pouring chalice in, in a cup that's provided in the trays, uh, or you may take uh, a cup with grape juice if, if that's what uh, you prefer. There is also bread and gluten-free wafers. Just let us know if you need uh, gluten-free and it'll be provided. All are welcome. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, whose suffering and death gave salvation to all. You gather your people around the tree of the cross, transforming death into life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting, and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. O oh God of resurrection and new life, Pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth burning with justice, peace, and love. 
Come, Holy Spirit. With Bishop Oscar Romero, your holy ones of all times and all places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your reign and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Bread for the journey, a feast for hungry hearts. Welcome all. Amen.
please rise. Generous God, at this table we have tasted, tasted your immeasurable grace. As grains of wheat are gathered into one bread, now make us a loaf to feed the world. In the name of Jesus, the bread of life. Amen. You may be seated for the Passion reading. The Passion according to Mark. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort. And they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews. They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the, the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right, and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And three, at three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama zabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, listen, he's calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the centurion, excuse me, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, truly, this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance among them were Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James the younger, and of Joses, and Salome. These used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. Beloved, we are God's own people, holy, washed, renewed. God bless you and keep you, shower you with mercy, fill you with courage, and give you peace. Amen.
Go in peace, share your bread. Thanks be to God.